Hey guys, it's Loaf, back with another video for the new Last Epoch patch. I just finished my first dungeon, one of the new features they added this patch, and I wanted to share my experience with you. In this video, I will go over how to access the dungeon, what to expect once you are in there, killing the new boss, and crafting my first legendary item. If you do want to avoid any spoilers, this may not be the video for you. With that out of the way though, let's go ahead and get into the video. Alrighty guys, so first up is how do we get into the dungeon? In order to access the Temporal Sanctum dungeon, you'll need to get a Temporal Sanctum key. So from my knowledge, this can drop from uh, a random uh, mob from the Echoes, but the most reliable drop is from Monolith Bosses. That's where I got my key. So you'll need to grab one of these guys first uh, before we even get on to the next step. After that, we need to go over to the Ruined Coast. Now, one thing I had noticed there is when I tried to go to the Ruined Coast, which was part of the original campaign for the game, the uh, waypoint was actually locked. It didn't let me teleport there as if I had never been there. So I believe this was taken out of the campaign, and they wanted you to access this after the fact when you're ready to go to dungeons. Alright, so in order to access the Ruined Coast, since it is locked, we're going to want to jump over to the Imperial Era and go to the Shining Cove waypoint. Once we're there, you're just going to hug the right side here, and eventually you're going to come across a doorway here that will put you over to the Ruined Coast. So same way that you did originally in the campaign. All of these guys should be fairly low level still. I think it's like area 35. So this door right here is brand new, and this looks a little bit different as well. Alright, so once we're over here into the Shining Cove, we're just going to go through and clear out all the monsters. It looks like they kept them at level 35 for some reason. Um, I believe you aren't supposed to encounter the dungeon in the campaign until around level 50, so it's kind of weird that they kept them all still really low level. So we're going to smash through all of this stuff here. Once you get it where uh, the waypoint is, there used to be a boss here, but instead now there's a drawbridge that you'll interact with. And once you get the drawbridge, it looks like it's actually the, the boss that was in the campaign. It will give you the dungeon entrance here, the Temporal Sanctum. Alright, so once you're here, there will be a guy you can interact with. He doesn't really do much, just a couple of voice lines. Uh, and it will also give you access to your stash here. So that way you can empty it out, make sure you have a clean inventory. There's going to be a lot of drops coming out of the dungeon, so I would make sure that you don't have anything uh, taking up space there. Alright, then once you're ready, you'll just click on the door. It'll give you a little slot to throw your key into, and then you'll go ahead and enter Sanctum. Once you get there, it's going to give you a couple different tiers. It goes up to tier 4, uh, with this being my first time, even though my character is a higher level, I had to start out the level 55, which is going to be important to know. You're going to want to have a unique item that has legendary potential on it that is lower than a level 50, otherwise you won't be able to craft on it. So I dropped a, a couple items prior to this that were would let me craft a legendary. And then once you're in here, in order to progress into the dungeon and a common mechanic here, you're going to need to click the D key. That's going to allow you to shift in between time. And it's going to give you access to some new spots there that you wouldn't have in the previous time zone. I am going to go ahead and fast forward through most of this stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just go through, kill the monsters as quickly as you can. A lot of them will drop pretty good gear. You can get a lot of uh, exalted items from doing this. And then on the little mini map, you can see there is circle icons. That just indicates that that pathway is blocked. In order to get around those, you'll need to fast forward through time and reverse back and kind of build, uh, go through the maze that way. But you'll find the path there eventually, and it'll take you to one of two doors. Each door will have a reward and uh, a negative side effect there for taking that. That will increase the monster's difficulty. You'll just take whichever one sounds more appealing to you.
A good side note, after going through the dungeon, I would probably recommend full clearing, especially after you've taken your first door. Once I got the uh, first modifier, I started seeing a lot more exalted items starting to drop, um, and I'm sure some of the doors are going to be more powerful than the others. I've only seen a couple of them right now, and they were fairly generic. So I would probably recommend going through as much as you can in one time zone, and then swapping back over to the, uh, the other era and full clearing it again, just to get the most out of it. Um, that seems to be the, the best way to kind of farm the exalted items, rather than just trying to farm them out of the, uh, the monolith. Alright, so here's the first door. So like I said, yeah, enemies drop slightly more exalted amulets, and it comes with 20% increased damage and health for enemies. Then once we came through here, it looked like everything was a dead end. So I did have to actually uh, transfer the time in order to get a pathway that I could access. Go ahead and zip through this last little part here. At least with this first dungeon, it looked like there was only two doors I had to go through. There was the one with the mob modifier and then one with the boss modifier here at the end that you're going to see. Um, I'm assuming the higher difficulties will have a lot more doors to work with, but we'll kind of have to... Uh, wait and see on that. By the time I was done farming out the, the dungeon here, I did end up getting three more keys to run more dungeons. So I would assume if you did a better job at full clearing, you'd get a lot more than that. So you should be able to just run these indefinitely, I would guess. Uh, so it's probably best to go that route, just try to farm up as many of these exalted and start pumping out those uh, uniques as much as possible. Hopefully you guys can get a little bit better drops on the uniques with legendary potential than I did. That way you can keep uh, cycling them through and not have to jump back and forth between the monolith and the dungeons. Alright, so the dungeon boss drops additional exalted items and then 30% increased damage and enemy health. I wasn't sure if the boss would have exclusive drops. I think I read something that it had a higher chance to drop uniques with uh, increased potential. I didn't know what the exalt drops would be, so I did want to take that door. So here we have the Chronomancer Jura. she's the new boss. It seems like there's a lot of mechanics going on. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I am a much higher level than the zone, so I'm able to tank a lot of the stuff. Um, but it looks like there's a couple different things. We've got some totems that are shooting lightning. She leaves some uh, damage over time pools on the ground. I'm guessing they're void damage. This little spinning thing kind of looks like the Maven fight from Path of Exile, if you guys are familiar with that. So she kind of leaves an opening that's going to be safe. And then she'll occasionally do a what looks like a cold damage front of the cone. As far as the, the big AoE circle, it looks like you take less damage the farther away you are from it. Because there isn't really a safe zone. Uh, but that's just what I would assume with the only fighting her once. As far as the drops go, uh, they look pretty mediocre. Just like a bunch of random exalts. I didn't see anything that had crazy stats on it. Um, didn't seem like there was a chance for uh, increased chance for them to be higher tier. They seem just kind of run of the mill. Uh, exalted items. As far as the boss room itself, there isn't really anything else to interact with. I did want to check all the corners and swap over to the other time just to be safe, but it looks like you just kill her, you get what drops off her, and then you just go through the door. Once we're in this room, you'll have access to your stash again. Uh, on top of that, we're going to have the Eternity Cache. So the Eternity Cache is where we're going to be crafting the legendary items. So you're going to throw in one unique item with legendary potential, and then a exalted item that has at least four fixes on it. So the more legendary potential you have, the more chance you have to get more of the stats pulled over. So at this point in time, the only legendary or unique items I'd found had only had one legendary potential. Uh, so the most I could get is one stat. So this is the exalted item I decided to use since I had a exalted uh, two-handed sword and a uh, unique two-handed sword that had legendary potential on it. So I just tried to craft it as high as I could, get as many T5 stats on there as possible. So it wasn't too bad. We had exalted and two T5s that were decent and then one dead stat. So once you put it in there and you seal the cache, what you guys need to do it's not going to let you do anything when you interact with it. You need to actually change which time zone you're in. Uh, so you click the, the D key to do the, uh, the temporal shift there. And then after that, it'll give you access to your item. So 
nice cool little red color and there we have it the last laugh that's my first legendary item there it was decent rolled the uh the armor shred so not too bad for like a leveling item i didn't really have any fantastic to to put in there so we'll, we'll take it and uh work for those higher difficulty dungeons as we go Alrighty guys, well that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. I appreciate you guys for watching all the way through. If you did like the content, leaving a like and subscribe would help the channel out a ton so I can continue to make content like this. And I will catch you guys in a future video. See ya.